Hey guys, welcome back to the Simple Car Guy channel. In this video, we will have some fun installing the oil pump, oil pickup tube, the timing chain, and timing the engine. I like doing the timing chain so much that I did it twice. More on that later. If you're new here, welcome. And well, I've been rebuilding my BMW M55 engines for the past few weeks, and it's been a great learning experience. I have replaced the main bearings, crankshaft, sealed the bed plate, installed new rod bearings and new head gasket. The last huge item on the list is the timing chain, which is today's video. While I'm doing this with the engine out, it is possible to do a timing chain job without having to remove the engine from the car. As in previous videos, I won't be showing you those steps, but I'll do a quick overview on how to get where we are. I recommend you watch my previous videos where I show a lot more detail on this assembly. Now would also be a great time to hit that like button for me and for YouTube algorithm. So the quick overview, here we go. Step 1. Unplug the battery, drain the oil from the engine, remove air filter housing or clean air pipe running over the valve cover, depending on the car, and undo the gas pressure lines. Step 2. Remove the underbody protection, intake silencer housing, fan cowl and the serpentine belt that runs the accessories. With that access you can now remove the vibration dampener and front crankshaft seal. If the belt tensioner is in the way, you may need to remove that as well. Step 3. Remove the valve or also known as the cylinder head cover by unplugging the vacuum lines, wiring from the injectors and anything else that's in the way. If you're using the valve cover, make sure you undo the bolts in the correct order and remove it from the cylinder head. If you aren't replacing the oil pump or the oil pump chain and sprocket, no further disassembly is required. Otherwise, you will have to remove the front axle differential, remove the power steering pump, and remove the bearing support to be able to remove the oil sump and have access to those parts. Before you can remove the timing chain or the oil pump components, you have to rotate the engine into top dead center position using the main bolt. You know it's in the correct position when cylinder number one is at the very top. Now we can install the timing tool onto the camshafts to make sure they do not move while we remove the central bolts on the intake and the exhaust camshaft adjusters. You should have no issues on bolting these. Always start by hand. You definitely don't want to strip these threads. Then remove the chain tensioner as well as it will give your chain some slack and allow you to remove the camshaft adjusters by hand. Next the main bolt must be loosened and taken out. This is a tough one. With the engine out it took an 8 foot pipe to get it done. But I have also done it with the engine in the car on my N20 timing chain job and it was a little easier. Whichever way you go about this make sure the socket is very secure on the bolt and doesn't slip away. And spray some WD-40 or whatever else you have if it's a bit rusty. With the main bolt out, there are only a few things holding the timing chain and the timing chain guide in place. The two bearing journals that are hiding behind the screw plugs, the crankshaft hub, two little screws at the top by the camshaft adjusters, and of course the camshaft adjusters themselves. With those removed, hold the timing chain and guides with one hand and remove the hub with the other making sure not to drop the sprocket. I recommend keeping the chain tight to avoid this and just pull it up as soon as the hub has cleared it. Now that everything is out of the way, we can finally get to the fun parts. Since I'm rebuilding the engine, I'm reinstalling the oil pump using new bolts. The install is very simple, but to be safe I do a mock-up with the old bolts while I'm working on getting the chain assembly in. Just in case I have to move it or something isn't lining up perfectly. If I used new bolts and have to loosen them, I would have to replace them again. I have now routed the oil pump chain through the other sprocket that's all the way over there in the depth of the engine. So you just have to make sure it goes around the sprocket and onto the tensioner that's right here. That tensioner that's right there. Put the main bolt in temporarily. This is the old one just so it holds it in more or less the correct position. Obviously it goes around the sprocket around the oil pump and I'm gonna put the old bolts in temporarily here as well so that I can 
make sure everything fits correctly everything is good once i know everything's 100 percent i'm going to replace these with the correct bolts the three bolts at the top are torqued to 10 newton meters and then 180 degree angle of rotation for the longer bolt and 90 degrees for the shorter bolts now that i know everything lines up i'm going to remove these bolts or these screws and replace them with new ones that i will then torque to spec we're now doing four newton meters and then additional 45 degrees we are almost done with this job and as you can see it does take some time and effort to get here no wonder a shop would charge you a couple thousand dollars for this anyway to install the new chain and tensioner make sure it's all assembled correctly and the sprocket is pointing the right way very important okay so the sprocket got into that little groove right there that's what we want then it can all be lowered into the engine, lining up the sprocket with the camshaft hub and locking it in place with a new main bolt. You don't have to tighten it to spec just yet. First, reinstall the two bearing journals and two little screws at the top to hold everything in place. Torquing all to spec, of course. Just like with the bottom, I'm trying to get everything lined up before I torque the bolts down. So there are two different bolt bearing journals, whatever you want to call them. A little bit longer one and a shorter one. Obviously they have a different thread, but this bigger one goes at the bottom, right there, and you cover it with this cap. We'll torque it after everything matches, like I said. And these are actually 8 newton meters. This is going to be 14 newton meters. And then this screw plug is 25 newton meters. This bearing journal is going to go to 20 newton meters. And this big plug is going to go to 50 newton meters. And of course, let's not forget the low one here for uh, the oil pump chain. This one's going to be 27 newton meters. Now, the main bolt can be torqued to 100 newton meters and additional 270 degree rotation. I recommend having someone help you out with this one. It just felt a little sketchy as I was doing it alone. I know you guys are gonna totally rip me a new one with this thing, but I didn't wanna wait another week for the stopper tool to show up. I'm trying to take that main bolt, well, I'm trying to tighten the main bolt to the correct torque. And while I need to stop the crankshaft from spinning somehow, I install, you know, the plate in here, which is great then I have to stop it somehow and well I don't have the correct tool so I had one of these so it's basically a little stopper for when you have the engine inside the car and you go through the transmission and it just kind of locks in place there works great however there isn't anything in here that would work so I decided to just kind of jam it in here we'll put it up until the flywheel and get a screwdriver so it's in place it's pretty solid it's not gonna go anywhere so now i can go ahead and do my 100 newton meters plus 270 degree torquing on the main bolt should be interesting hope it works and of course i made sure that the engine is in top dead center um so this is the cylinder six this is cylinder one they're pretty much you know in the same position in the engine and as you can see this is straight up so that tells me the the piston is all the way down. I also uh, put a piece of rod, like a plastic little rod, through the spark plug hole, and I was I moved the crankshaft up and down just a little bit, and it was at the very top where it would just get to the top, and then as soon as you crank just a little bit more, it would start going down. So that's where the engine is at now. I have my torque wrench set to one hundred newton meters or it's about 73.7 pound feet of torque there's no going back now okay 100 newton meters now we're gonna do 270 degree angular rotation that's gonna be tough all right so i got my big boy breaker bar gonna set it to zero zero so you have to go all the way 
to 270. All right, wish me luck. Okay, that's only 50. That's 100. So I made it to 100 on my own. But we got a lot more. That was only like 10. <laughs> I'm slightly concerned that I'm gonna flip the engine over. Not gonna lie. All right, that's 185. 70 more, 70 more degrees. This much torque is no joke. 230. And that is 271. I'll take that. That works for me, boys. Whew. Who needs to go to the gym if you could be putting uh, crank bolts on on BMW engines all day? With the main bolt locking everything in place, it's time to install the intake and exhaust camshaft adjusters back in with the chain around them. Should be pretty easy since the chain tensioner is not yet installed. Of course, you have to make sure that the intake adjuster goes on the right side and the exhaust on the left. You cannot mix these up. While you're pulling the chain over the exhaust adjuster, make sure that it's sitting on the guide rail and not anywhere else. With everything looking good, we can install the pretensioning tool instead of the chain tensioner and torque it to 0.06 Newton meters and torque the central bolts to 20 Newton meters with 180 degree rotation after. The very last step before testing is installing the chain tensioner and torquing it to 55 Newton meters. Once everything looks good, we can remove all the special tools and rotate the engine a couple of times, making sure everything sounds good and then we check the timing. If everything still lines up and the timing tool fits as it did before, the engine is timed and ready for the new crankshaft seal and reassembly. A video on the front crankshaft seal is coming out soon. We obviously it checks out, so we spun the engine a couple of times, put this bracket back on so we're locking the camshafts in place and our timing is still good because this goes in without any issues, just like it did before. Sweet! Now, remember how I said I had to do this job twice? Well, after I rotated the engine a few times, it made this clicking sound from the camshaft adjuster, which I wasn't very sure about. So I posted a short clip to check with others and see if it's normal. I learned that indeed it is normal and it will go away as soon as the oil pressure is built up within the engine and is circulating properly but I also learned that I was making a mistake. Initially, when I looked at the timing components, they looked fine to me, so I reused them. But after many, many convincing arguments from strangers, I have decided to replace all of it with brand new stuff, including the chain tensioner. Anyway, thank you for watching. Check out the links in the description for parts needed. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.